Welcome back to episode two of Our House. The boys have been on fine form recently and we can't wait to welcome you back to Adams Park for Saturday's fixture against Lincoln City. Let's crack on. First up, on Tuesday night, the Chairboys travelled up north to take on Wigan in the league, returning home with a point and remaining unbeaten. Let's have a look at the night through admin cam and match day rewind.
Next, we spoke to EFL Team of the Week entry, Joe Jacobson, about the start of the season and that unforgettable set-piece hat-trick against Lincoln in 2019. Um, pretty good start to the season, JJ, and some really good um, personal performances. How has it been for you so far? Good, yeah, we've um, got some points on the board. Um, it's always nice to get your first win. We managed to get that the first game of the season. And yeah, we want to be successful this season. And, and the start ultimately, prob well, it didn't help us last season in, in where we wanted to be. And, and the season before that, when, when we did get promoted, we had a great start. I think we, we went unbeaten for a long period of time. So um, getting a good start is always, always really nicely um, you know, thought of when we're looking at the plans for the season. And, and yeah, we've had a good start, but that's all it is, the start. And now we've got to kind of um, use that to, to improve on. And Wigan was a bit of a tough one, but got the result in the end. What kind of things are you going to be taking forward to the Lincoln game on Saturday from that game? Yeah, I don't think we played as well as we have done, um, not just this season, but probably towards the back end of last season. And, um, you know, there's loads of cliches that it's still good to get a, a point when, you, when you're not playing well, but it but it is. And, and um, you know, we, we didn't panic. I think that was one of the things that we... We, we really looked at after the game is that we didn't, you know, maybe over the years we've gone a goal down and, and probably gone a bit gung ho and, and tried to to win it and, and lose a goal in the break or things like that. But I thought we stayed solid. I thought we, we waited and, and created opportunities where, you know, we weren't just lumping the ball in the box. We were getting the ball out wide and, and getting good crossed in. So it was nice to, to finally get the goal, the equaliser. It's always nice to score late on. And afterwards, the game in the change room, it felt like a, a win, really, on the, especially on the journey back and, and getting back so late. It felt, you know, it was a nice kind of way to finish finish the game. Really. And obviously that goal did come from a corner, but for once it wasn't you, it was Sully. Have you been giving him any tips? I spent hours with him out there all week. <laughs> uh, no, look, Sully, he's he's got very good delivery on him. Uh, it's nice to to kind of add someone to the squad who who can bring that that um, that to their game. I think we've got Josh as well, who, who likes to get on free kicks and set pieces. Jace obviously likes to take them, and so it's just a case of you know horses for courses. Different games, the manager will want in swingers or out swingers depending on how the opposition set up. And you know, thankfully, um, it allows me to go a little bit further forward on the edge of the box or sometimes in the box. And he produced um, a great corner. We nearly scored from the one before with him as well. And and Tools got in the end of it, and it was a great finish. And like I said, yeah, I ran, I, you could see him on the video. I ran straight to Seoul because I know sometimes everyone runs to the goal scorer, but sometimes it's nice when when people kind of run to the the person who kind of sets it all up and did it. And it was a great ball, and he deserves all the credit for it. And uh, looking forward to Saturday, obviously Lincoln City is a bit of a special one for you. Is it going to be uh, maybe a replay, a, a hat-trick of set pieces? Uh, well, getting three last, I've, I've got to try and get better, I'll try and get, get four <laughs> this time. Um, no, look, last time was special, special, not just for me, but the club, there was a bit of an occasion around the game. Um, I think we went top of the league that day for the first time in, in the history of the club and it, yeah, it was awesome that day. I think we, we played really well. We set up a different way. The gaffer set us up in a s specific way and it worked really well. And obviously, you know, the, the goals helped me in my performance that day. Um, but like anyone says, I don't care. As long as we get the win, you know, we want to keep this momentum going that we've got, not just from this season, but pre-season at the end of last season. We were on a bit of a, a run at the minute and we want to kind of keep that going as long as possible. So regardless who gets the goals or, or who who does anything like that, as long as we get the win, then, then everyone will be really happy. Yeah, and obviously it's been a, a week or so since our last home game. How important is it that fans come out in force to support us against Lincoln City? Oh, the fans are incredible. The Aki game um, coming out, it gave us goosebumps, you know, walking out again and seeing all the fans. The Leicester game pre-season was the same. I know it's a pre-season game, but having, having the atmosphere, having the fans here was incredible. And um, then we go away to Cheltenham and, and behind the goal, it felt like a home game. And, and re it, was, it was amazing. It's always really good down at Cheltenham. We always take a great following. So um, then you, you've got the fans away at Wigan in, in midweek. You travelled all that way up on a, on a horrible evening up in Wigan. And it's incredible to, to go to them after the game. You could see us. We were there for, for a while, you know, thanking them and, and clapping them off because, you know, they play a huge part in, in our success as well. So we're looking for another um, great atmosphere. Um, that starts with us, so we've got to put on a good performance to, to create the atmosphere in the first place and hopefully we can um, all have a good day on the weekend. And hopefully four, four uh, goals from a, from a set piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take some pens, some free kicks and corners, however <laughs> they come. Yeah, it'd be nice to, to get involved in, in the scoring charts, but if not, then, then just a win's fine with me. Pete Kirk is back in town and we took the opportunity to chat with him about all things HP12, as well as a bit of a dive into some music. 
Pete, good to see you back, man. You're uh, starting the season a little late. You've got plenty of uh, time to make up for, but I mean, you must have been so impressed with how things have gone so far. Yeah, it was uh, a little uncomfortable not being here during the um, early run, but uh, as everybody knows, I've been away from my family for quite some time. Uh, had to spend a couple of months this summer helping Finney out with the with the wife, with the kids, um, and it was good to be back. But uh, obviously, we got so much stuff coming up, coming in, coming on. Um, basically, a startup operation on uh, match day food and bev. Um, during COVID, our previous concessionaire uh, kind of just disappeared, and we had to come up with a solution. Fortunately, early on last year, we found. Uh, guy named Will Shaw, uh, who has been an incredible resource, uh, has worked at some of the top restaurants and hotels and bars in the London area, and um, really went about a game plan of trying to give all of our supporters what they want at, out of a match day experience, um, while also taking small baby steps at the beginning, um, because you know, that Leicester match, the first Accrington match, you know, I was hoping that the, the Leicester match was o our only soft opening, but not really. Uh, we knew that there were going to be, we were going to need to learn over the first few matches and, and adapt. And it's why we basically kept the menu very small early on. We were going to add some products. Uh, there was a little bit of a... Uh, Rebellion, no pun intended, well, about, let's, let's the, about the beefy drink. Show, mm -hmm. show us around then, because yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is the calm before the storm, I guess, in the Chairboys Village. Um, an improvement, obviously, on the, on the smaller model that was uh, available to fans a couple of years ago. Yep. The fan flags. This is going to be the heart of the atmosphere before the game, isn't it? And I'm sure you'll be popping in for a beer or two and, and a catch up with some friends. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, and I think we were a little slammed by the lines, but if you notice how we've set it up, there are pouring stations behind, so we were trying to pre-pour pre beer so we can serve them as quickly as possible. First match, we only had a couple of units open. Now we're going to have three, uh, as well as a, we're trying to get in place a queue management system um, that maybe points people, like three lines, rather than one big one that spreads out into three. We're just trying to organize what we saw in here. Uh, we've also, you know, it was only Rebellion at first. I uh, heard, heard a, you know, a couple of comments from, the, from, from some of the lads that they needed a lads lager out here. So this weekend we're bringing in a 16-ounce uh, cans of Carlsberg's for three pounds. Um, and so uh, there's a little bit more selection, but it, it kind of goes along with what we're going to do everywhere. We are slowly going to add more and more products as we uh, get used to the system. Um, and then once we have the system mastered, we should be able to expand even more. Um, this weekend we brought, we're bringing the, the, the cans of lager on. Um, we're bringing the Bovril back. Uh, also, uh, and it's kind of interesting because there was a little bit of a deal about the Bovril. Uh, there were, that was absolutely one of the things that we were planning on bringing along as we add more products. You know, I love Bovril. Uh, definitely drink it during the winter. Didn't realize so many people wanted to drink it during August, but hey, it's our mistake and we'll add it this week. Uh, we are also, this is the second match where we were always planning on, um, we were gonna bring back pies at some point and we're bringing them back this weekend. Uh, obviously that's critical. Um, we got a couple more food trucks, the return of Funky Elephant, which everybody loves. Um, and so, you know, hopefully the, the Chairboys Village, uh, the, we'll see lots of improvement on the lines. Now, you know, a lot of people want to drink beers. We're never going to get, I don't, you know, if we make this as popular as we want it, we're never going to get rid of cues. What we want them to do is move as quickly as possible. And I think we're getting there. Uh, and the more so soft openings we have, the, the, the better we'll be able to refine the system. We're never going to stop trying to get better. So it's not like we're going to get to a certain point and say, ah, oh, you know, it is what it is. Um, Will is very committed to uh, training the, the staff, um, which it is not the easiest thing in the world to do right now to hire staff in any hospitality business, uh, much less one where you only really have 23 days of employment, but he's done a good job of bringing new folks in. He trains them. Um, we're looking at different ways to uh, 
maybe even bring some volunteers in for the heavy one to two, one thirty to two thirty period. I think we're actually starting this this week where we got a couple of people coming in just to help out by pouring pints. Um, I'm not going to be afraid of uh, jumping behind the bar and pouring a few if needed. Although I would prefer to be on the other side drinking them. So it's pretty full on. I mean, just before we started recording, you were on a call about football in matter and and you know you we've been bombarded on social media with wanting to sign players in the summer and, and as soon as that starts to die down people are telling you to bring back pies and bottles you must love it though. you get you get the oversight of every single part of the club and, and yeah and a real insight into what the fans want what's going to make them tick well you know i mean you've been working with me for a couple of years um you know one of the things about the early matches with everybody coming back is as everybody know we changed the season ticket structure we changed the match day ticket pricing. Uh, we put in a pricing model that I understand there's gonna be some complaints about, but what we have said is we need to create a business that can support a club in League One that fights for promotion. And, you know, a couple of years ago when we came in, my initial analysis was to look at you know, my dad, he, my dad has been my partner forever. We call it the leaky faucets. And it's really just to analyze a business to see where money is leaking and you put a bucket under it. And so the, the change, the changes in the pricing model, the changes in what we've done, uh, the best way to explain it is that a couple of years ago, um, the SCMP for league one that we were dealing with was in the, which is based off of turnover and a percentage of turnover was about three million. And this year, the way that we are able to afford a club that can compete like this, that, that, is, that has this type of squad is through the improvements that, that have been made on uh, our projected revenue, which is supported by actual results through today. You know, Lester, we set a we set a record for spin per head on match day, and then we beat it at Accrington. And so, you know, some of my buddies jo have joked, uh, buy more seven pound burgers, that's how we get Sam Vokes. It's not really a joke, that's actually it. Um, I guess you could say that the more away funds that come, it could actually be away funds that help fund this club. And the reason I mention it, we do have an exclusive oh, show yes. here of our house, um, a new house, if you like, for your away fans. Yeah, it, you know, and this is kind of one of those things that we kind of had to do last minute, which because, it, you know, the lack of clarity, whether away fans were going to even be able to attend matches this year, that wasn't, we, that wasn't known until maybe three or four weeks ago. And so um, we're never going to, we're always going to try to not spend money unless we can make money off of it. So we needed to pull the trigger on an away marquee kind of last minute and you know, between the Accrington and Lincoln games um, is probably about as last minute as you can. You know, uh, nothing against Accrington, but we knew that not many people would be here. Uh, we were, we did allow them there. So it gave us a couple extra weeks to get prepared for Lincoln, which should bring a pretty sizable away crowd. Uh, and um, it's cool. that is Good. one awesome away marquee. Uh, you know, you're we... gonna make a few people envious, I think, in the uh, <laughs> Chairboys Village. But hey, drink some more beer. Anyway. Hey, well, look. One of the cool things about Wickham is, uh, and especially matches like Lincoln, um, is that if 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 one of our fans thinks that one's cooler than the other one, they can go spend some time down there. Uh, might not be feasible during uh, Sunderland matches, but uh, <laughs> with Lincoln, you know, we've got a good good relationship with them. No acrimonious stuff there. So uh, the the you know the police, the security have has said that you know the, the, the away and the home fans supporters can uh, mix. Um, wanted to bring you in here. Not a lot of fans will know that you're actually responsible for the lineup on match days. Um, we, don't, we don't mean Gareth's lineup. Uh, I think he's doing a pretty good job with that himself. The music in the stadium, um, a couple of years ago when you guys first came in, and certainly last year with no fans, it was hardly worth playing it. A lot of the speaker systems weren't up to scratch and yeah. it was crackly and all sorts. These new speakers are going to make an amazing atmosphere, aren't they? That puts more pressure on you to pick the right tunes. I, yeah. mean, I, I was going to talk you through some of them um, because 
there's some fascinating songs in there and some tracks that people might not know. This is this is the I think we go kickstart my heart first up. Not many fans will hear this in the Well, stadium. first of all, it's not just me. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know, let me say this. That's Gary. That's Gary Ainsworth right Absolutely. there to a T. That sets uh, the tone for the match. No, and and it goes back to this. Uh, uh, the co coaching staff and I, we took a uh, we took a trip after we achieved promotion, uh, just as a little celebration. And one of the things that Gareth and I did while we were there um, was spend a lot of time as to what should be on the playlist, um, specific songs, specific genres. Uh, you know, we, we you know, it's not an idle claim that says we're a rock and roll football club. You know, Gareth is a very big 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 fan of 80s hair metal and so the early part of the playlist what do we got there well i want a rock twisted sister obviously gene simmons yeah. and kiss rock and roll yeah, all night exactly I mean, that's gareth angels to a t exactly Some good english um no and it shifts well, and, and 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 really um because you gotta cut to me uh that playlist which is two hours long really needs to just provide an environment um that's fun. So you got some, you know, I've always loved English rock, uh, going way back and, and specific, you know, I've, I love ska, I love reggae, I love so many different genres of music. And so, uh, you know, when we kind of went through there, we wanted to, we wanted to include all of the great, all of the impact that great bands from England have had over the last 40 or 50 years. Um, are very well represented in there. Uh, You've got the Verve, that'll please Neil Peters. Oh, exactly. Yeah, and, stadium Operations, who loves that part yeah. of uh, the Northwest. Yeah. Wonderwall, obviously, Oasis. Yeah. Blur, Park Life, proper Brit Pop, The Cure. Got a little Brit Pop section. And then, and then going into the finale, and this is the one, I guess, the songs that fans will hear most of. They're in the stadium yes. at this point, 20 to 3. Wild Thing. The although we, although at one, yes. Wild Thing, Jimi Hendrix version, because, you know, I love the original, but when we're talking about Gareth Ainsworth, Wild Thing, I think it's more appropriate for the original or the Jimi Hendrix version, which is recorded live in London as well, that's right? That's the one. And then uh, Only in Dreams by Weezer. Yeah. Uh, I, that's a weird selection. It is a, I think it's probably about a nine or 10 minute song. Uh, not going to lie, I probably listened to that album a million times back in the 90s. Um, but to me, it is... Uh, it's almost perfect because we put it sort of towards the end of the warm-ups um, and, and, and it's a very specific mention to uh, our, our main sponsor, which is Dreams, which is a local company who came on uh, for us very strong last year. Uh, it just seemed like one of the perfect picks because a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on in the stadium you know, during that time frame that doesn't need to be a totally in your face song so it's sort of you know kind of a more ethereal build up to that spot um also one of the things i've been trying to get matt to do is more uh subtle nods to our advertisers and uh that's pretty subtle <laughs> to be honest i think if you're hearing the song in the stadium you might not recognize it you talk about in your face welcome to the jungle um that speaks for itself guns and roses but firewoman the cult for the walkout track talk us through this one yeah that it would sound better on the speaker. Well, first of all, it gives honest. me... Yeah, exactly. Well, first off, uh, as I said, Gareth and I spent a lot of time going over what um, should be on the playlist. And, man, it, it, The Cult is a band that both of us love, have always loved. It is about as rock and roll as you can get coming from England. Uh, and it's the first concert that Gareth and I, Gareth and I went to um, together. Uh, so when we were sitting in that very cool underground pub bar uh, that was playing some of the best rock and roll Gareth and I had ever heard um, when we were talking about a walkout song for last year, uh, I can't remember if he said it or I said it, but it, when we when we played Firewoman, we just knew it was perfect. Um, it also fits pretty dang well with the uh, fireworks. <laughs> and uh, knowing how much my Uncle Rob loves fireworks, I knew uh, that would probably fit pretty well when we did it. So how's it gonna feel? Five to three, Firewoman by the Colt is just coming on. 
you'll have just sold a thousand pints in the Chairboys village. The Lincoln fans are happy and rowdy in their new village. You're here in Adams Park for the first time with fans properly since, I don't know, we beat Tranmere February 2020. That's going to be a special moment, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it feels like decade. I mean, I, sometimes it feels like the quickest year ever that just passed, and sometimes it feels like the longest. Um, I went away to Wigan. Uh, 337 awesome cheer boys made the trip. It was it was fun to be in that environment, but nothing compares to five minutes before kickoff at Adams Park. Uh, happy to hear that so many people showed up early, uh, so there'd be a good party environment uh, outside. Um, it's my first year as a season ticket holder for Wickham Wanderers. I got my Terrace season ticket, so uh, definitely going to be spending some time there uh, with the le with. Uh, the chair boys, especially when we're going towards that way, and I hope it's in the second half. Um, but it's, uh, I'm really, uh, really excited. Uh, you know, the one bit that's a little bit disappointing is, um, you know, COVID having to go back, uh, the, the, the difficulty with travel. Um, my family had all, everybody had planned to be here for that first Accrington game. Um, obviously still dealing with COVID issues. I, you know, is it going to be awesome? Yeah. Could it be a little bit better? Yeah. My entire family could be here, but Rob's going to be here. My dad's going to be here. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. Absolutely. you got all your family with us here as well. Pete, Tom, man. See Cheers, you. brother. See you beyond Up the, the wick. It wasn't just me grilling JJ. You guys sent in your own questions and this is what you had to say. Well, JJ, you are the first player to uh, face fan questions for our house. Um, ready to get started? Let's do it. Okay, first one, I guess kind of easy. Um, who is the most likely player, other than yourself, to score two corners in a game? Well, Sol's on corners at the minute with me, so I would have to say him. Uh, there's a few boys that have said that, oh, it's easy to shoot from corners. <laughs> They'd love to have a go and in training, they can never do it. So, but I'd say Sol. I'd say okay. Sol. Nice. Um, who controls the music in the changing room? And kind of sub question, who has the best slash worst music taste? Um, it kind of changes depending on who just plugs their phone into it. Um, I think Anti Stewart does a lot of it, which isn't too bad. Uh, I, I don't mind his his. Um, he's got quite a you know broad thing for everyone. Whereas Scott Cashgate, we played Barnsley away last season, and there was. There was like Britney Spears, there was like 90s pop going on before the game. I think that's the last thing you need to kind of um, get yourselves up for a game. Probably one of the reasons why we lost that game away actually, but um, I will blame all the Scottish music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, this one's a bit of a niche one. What is your favourite cheese? I like cheese. Um, <laughs> I'm just like a, do you know what I like is a port salut. I don't think I've ever heard of that. It's the one with like the orange like, um, like a skin? Yeah, orange skin. What does it yeah. taste like? It's not that cheesy, but I like the texture of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, this one's a, probably a tough one, and you might get a bit of stick from the boys, um, or two of them. Mm -hmm. Who is the most Welsh? Yeah. You, Alex Samuel, Vokes, or Adam Prisbeck? Definitely not Vokesy. I don't think Vokesy's ever been to Wales. <laughs> um, ads as well. Yeah, not sure Ads can, with that surname, he's not Welsh either. Um, I've got to give it to Alex, come on. The way he talks, the way, you know, he could do a whole country file programme on West Wales and the beaches <laughs> and, and things like that. So it does hurt me to say, but I'm going to go with Alex. Okay, cool. Um, and this is a sub question. Do you think you could still get the call up for Wales? No. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> that, that is an yeah. yeah, that is an easy answer for Johnny there. Um, I'd love to, but no. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, promotion again with Wickham, or to play for Wales in the next World Cup. I mean, you've kind of answered that already, but hypothetically. Um, hypothetically, that's a really tough question. I suppose Wales would have to get into a World Cup. Ooh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that that yeah. First of all. Um, to win the World Cup, I would say win the World Cup. Just to play in the World Cup, oh, you can't you can't turn down playing in the World Cup. You know, we've had a couple of promotions. We'll get more promotions with Wickham, but okay. just a one-off World Cup, I'll take that. Okay, Sorry, nice, everyone. nice. <laughs> um, and last but not least, uh, or yeah, 
What's in store for you once the curtain falls on your playing career? Not too not too soon, they said. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, thank Are you trying to retire me already? No, not um, <laughs> I thought I'd been doing all right. Uh, I kind of want to stay in football somehow. I'm not sure about coaching or management, anything like that. I'm, I'm doing some studying in, in some other forms at the minute. Um, so I'd like to go into kind of helping players off the pitch maybe, rather than on the pitch. I think there's something I'm not quite sure yet at the, mo at the moment. I, you know, the, I'm solely focused on carrying on playing and want to play for as long as possible and as long as I still enjoy coming in. So um, yeah, I've started doing a few things. I'm, I'm involved with Kick It Out, which I really love doing stuff with that as well. So um, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure exactly what route, but I'm sure something will kind of fall fall into place when I, when I need it to happen. Maybe um, a set piece coach. Yeah, that'd be nice. If there's a role for me doing that, that would be, um, yeah, I could just show my YouTube clips over the years. <laughs> so that's all for Our House episode two. Make sure you get down here on Saturday to support the boys against Lincoln City. Come on, you blues. <laughs>